I've drawn a few simple series parallel circuits here. We're going to apply Ohm's law to these. I haven't put any kind of uh, values on any of this yet. I want to uh, talk a little bit about the series <coughs> current and, and our characteristics to start off with. We have a battery here. I'm representing a DC circuit. By the way, Ohm's law uh, applies to both DC and AC circuits, but if uh, in an AC circuit, if you have what's called impedance, it doesn't apply exactly right. You have to figure your capacitance and your inductance into an AC circuit in order for Ohm's law to be co completely correct. But we can use it in most circuits that we're going to deal with without any problem. <clears throat> okay, let's start off with our series circuit here. We can see from our source that there's only one path of resistance. Now, or only one path for the uh, amps to move. And we're going to put some values on this and then like I say, we're going to apply Ohm's law to it. Let's say that we have a hundred volts on our battery. Well, let's put a value of 10 ohms on our, ohm, uh, on our resistor there. Well, let's apply Ohm's law. Ohm's law tells us that E is equal to I times R. If you remember the triangle, it would have been like, like so. So let's plug in our values. We have 100 on our uh, voltage, and we have 10 on our resistance, which gives us an amp draw of how much? 10. Because 100 divided by 10 tells us that we're going to have an amp draw equal to 10 moving through that circuit. Now, you notice I, I put a switch in here, and I'll tell you why I did that, because we're going to look at how a switch changes things. If I open this switch, it stops that amp drop. Therefore, I have no power being used whatsoever. We haven't said anything about power yet, but we can actually figure out what the power would be. Back, back to Ohm's law, P is equal to I, I mean E times, yeah, I times the E. Or, okay, and there again, I, there's a little triangle. So if I wanted to find out what kind of power is being used here, I can go I times E. Well, that would be 10 times 100, which in this case would be 1,000. Okay. Now, let's talk a little bit about voltage drop. And the reason being is when you troubleshoot, you're looking actually at voltage drops. All right. If this switch is open and I put a meter across this switch, it is going to read the source, 100 volts. If this switch is closed, and I put that meter across there, there is no voltage drop across here. So it's going to read zero <coughs> volts. Okay? Now, that may not make a whole lot of sense, but a switch is just like a piece of wire. When it's closed, it should have very little resistance whatsoever. Therefore, it would have no voltage drop across it. If I want to see what the voltage drop across this one resistor would be when the circuit's operating correctly, I can go back to Ohm's law, take my current time my, times my resistance, and I would find that the 100 volts would be across this resistor. Okay? That is when it's operating. What if that resistor were burn out? you would still have 100 volts there, okay? Because the voltage drop across here is where the voltage stops. That is your 100 volts right there. Think of a light bulb. If you have a light bulb burn out and you measure that voltage at that light bulb, you're still going to have the voltage there. It's just there's no current drop. Okay? So you're an open circuit there, in yep. other words? You'd be an open circuit, but you still have the source of the voltage across that, okay? All right, let's, let's, let's take a little bit more, let's go a little bit more to another series circuit. And what happens when we have more than one resistor? Now, this is going to get a little more complicated. Let's say that we have five ohms. 
we have 10 ohms and we have, let's see if I can do something in my head and make this work out, um, 20 ohms and it's not going to work out exactly like I wanted it to. Alright, let's take our voltage source and make it 100 volts again, okay? Now, if we were to fit, want to figure out what the voltage drops across each one of these would be, there's a couple of ways to do that. Let's use, number one, let's use uh, Ohm's Law by adding up our total resistance. It would be R1, which is resistor 1, plus resistor 2, plus resistor 3. In other words, R1 plus R2 plus R3. If we had more resistors, it would continue. So we take 20 plus 5, 25 plus 10 more ohms would be 35. Does that sound correct? Yeah. Okay. So 35 ohms, that is called RT, or our total. So now we need to know what the current draw is. We go back to Ohm's Law again. We take the E divided by the R, which would be 100 divided by 35, and this is where my calculator comes in. <laughs> And a smart person would have used uh, numbers that would have come out yeah. even, but you know, that's, that's another. Okay, I come up with, I'm going around it, uh, 2.85, okay, 2.85 amps. So that amp draw through here, the amps would equal 2.85. Eight, five. And I, I rounded off a little bit. So, Okay, now, if we want to find out what the voltage drop across each resistor is, we can do that by taking the resistance times the current, and it'll give us the voltage drop. So we take the 2.85, <coughs> multiply it by the 20, and we get... Fifty-seven point one five, I think, is roughly what it was. That would be the votes across this particular one. Okay, we can do the same thing with the other resistors. Five times. This one would have fourteen point two five across. It. And this one I can do in my head, believe it or not. This one would have 28.5. Now, I want you to do something. Let's add these up. 28.5 plus 14.25 and uh, 57.25. 99.9. 99.9. You know, I rounded off on my amp draw. That's the reason it didn't come out to 100. If I hadn't rounded it out, it would have come up to the voltage source. Okay. Now, that's the way you figure voltage drop. This may make it help uh, uh, you understand a little bit more when I put a switch in here and I have that switch open, then this would be where the voltage drop is at, not across the loads anymore. Okay. But that's what each one of these things is doing. It goes back to Ohm's Law. If I recall, the scientist that come up with that, his name was Kirchhoff. And uh, we don't really teach Kirchhoff's law as we used to in school, but that's based on Kirchhoff's law. All right, let's erase some of this and let's go back and do some parallel circuits and show you how they work. We've seen what happens with series circuits where everything is based on the current draw <clears throat> or one path of current. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and erase this part up here completely. All right. So what if we do have a parallel circuit? Instead of only having one path for the current now, we have multiple paths or at least two passes. Let's use uh, 10 ohms here and 10 ohms here. Now this sounds like I'm really making it simple, but I'm not. Let's use 
100 volts for our source once again. Now how do we know what that total resistance of that circuit is? We need to find that out. Well, in order to be able to find out what parallel resistors equal, we have to use a formula which is R1 plus R2, and this is when you're dealing with only two resistors, over, let's see, I got that back, times R2, over R1 plus R2. So in this particular case, I have 20 over 100. And I think that you'll find out that that is going to give us 5 ohms for RT. Okay? Did you notice something though? The total resistance is always going to be less than the smallest resistor. Okay? And I, I can give you another example of that like this. If this was 5 and this was 10, I can tell you that the total resistance is going to be less than 5. Okay? We can do that. We still have 100 for our vote source. Instead of having these numbers now, we have um, 10 times 5 is 50. And 50 under 15. And once again, let's take the calculator because my mind is not that good. <laughs> No, nah, okay, I'm just okay. trying to do it in the end. It's going to be 3.333. Okay. okay. By doing that, you, if you come up with a number that's larger than your smallest resistor, you know you made a mistake. So you know that the, the resulting uh, calculation has to be smaller than the smallest resistor in parallel. Okay. Let's leave it at that, 3.33, okay? Now, how do we know what the current draw is, each one of these? Well, first of all, we can figure total current draw by taking the 100 volts and dividing it by 3.33. And that will give us our total current draw. Roughly 30 amps is what it's going to be. Roughly 30 amps. Okay, that's here. That's not here or here. Each one of these is going to have its individual amount of current draw. And if we do this correctly, it should add back up to that 30 amps. Well, let's do the this one right here. We can tell it real quick. 10 into 100 tells me that I'm going to have 10 amps right here. Does that sound right to y'all? Okay, well, what is uh, 5 into 100? 20. 20. So I'm going to have 20 amps right there going through this circuit. It gives me the total of the third. Okay? All right. Now, what about the voltage drop across here? What would the voltage drop be? There is none. Okay. Actually, it is the same thing as the supply. Okay? The voltage drop, if we measure it individually on each resistor, it would come up to the total. Okay? And that's a little bit confusing compared to the uh, uh, series circuit, but you got to think each one of these is straight across the voltage source. And a little reverse thinking here. There is a voltage drop, but it's across the circuit, which is the same as the source. Okay? Now, what if I had three uh, resistors or more than one load in parallel? Then we've got to do a little something different. And I'm probably going to mess this one up. <laughs> Knowing me. Alright, if that's my resistance of those, I cannot use this formula here. Number one. This is only good for two, two resistors in parallel. So what do we do? We have 1 over R equals 1 over 1 over 5, 1 over 1 over 10. It's getting a little more complicated, isn't it? Okay. You have to use the reciprocal of each one. And you would uh, uh, add those together and then work your math out. I'm not going to go into that 
much detail on this particular one, but I guarantee you this much. It's going to be less than 5 ohms. Guarantee you it's going to be less than 5 ohms. But we can also apply our Ohm's Law to that. Power-wise, we didn't say too much about power-wise, but real quick, what would the power of this particular one be using? What, what would this resistor be using power-wise or producing? 10 times, what is the voltage? It would be 1,000 watts. Okay. What about this one? 20 times 100. 2,000? Okay. Does that sound right? 2,000 watts. The total wattage of this particular one? 30 times 100. 3,000 watts. Okay. All right. Y'all can work with that a little bit, and I guarantee you the more you do, the better you'll be. But it really helps on troubleshooting, especially when you're looking at a situation where maybe you have low voltage to a system and you don't know where you're losing that voltage. You can go back and, and do some voltage checks while it's under a load and you may find out that the conductor going to it is too little, which would have the voltage drop across the conductor. Or you may have a loose connection somewhere. Loose connections will reduce the amount of voltage that's available at the uh, device itself. This this helps big time when you're when you're trying to analyze circuitry, have, having an understanding of Ohm's law and how it applies to the circuits. Okay.